special. This is the 225th video today. And today, for this special occasion, we are going to York to see the final A4 I need on the national network. Yes, for the first time on the main line, we're going to be seeing Sir Nigel Presley doing the Cathedral's Express from London King's Cross up to York. Now today we're going to be meeting up with some friends as well. And of course, going to visit to the National Railway Museum. Well, for this special edition, sit back, grab yourself a ticket, and enjoy my railway journey today to York. Here we are, Prescott Station before six in the morning. As you have done in our previous document, in our previous series. Now the lights brightening up as we're now well into the spring. And already disruption on our line, particularly on that train. Should be arriving in about two minutes, is now 13 minutes down. Thirteen minutes, it says, love. Oh, wait a minute. The announcer's computerised. Never mind. We're waiting for the 604, which my train is bang on time. We know it's coming from St. Talon Central. But there's a green light clear. Anyway, we're just going to wait for the 604 train going down to Liverpool Lime Street. Our Train to York is at 7.15. And with First Transpanine, we're travelling in first class. That means first class ticket, bitches. Oh, bad news, blooming strut. Oh, no. now our 604 train's been cancelled. Typical. God's sake. Now I have to go back up here and get a bus. The only good thing is I got my money back on my ticket, on my single ticket. <sighs> With minutes to go, they should toss at least 10 minutes. Try and go find a... Now I've got over an hour to get to Liverpool. We've now made it into Liverpool Line Street. Just with 15 minutes to spare. There's our train. 7.15 departure on platform 9. That's where we're going. York.
Let's get on now then. Well, here's our train that will form the 715 departure. 185, 182. We're going as far as York on this train. We're going to be in this carriage, specifically around here. Central, Birchwood, Erdem, Manchester, Oxford Road, Manchester, Piccadilly, Stanley Bridge, Buttersfield, Leeds, York, Moulton, Seymour, and Scarborough. Chester. Problems to delay us.
Film shot of the day, Ian Paul's train arriving. Going to terminate. We're now on our way into the National Railway Museum. Have a quick look around before we get to Nigel Gresley. And I'm with these two, Jason and Ian. Nice to meet you two. I know, Ian, you're a little bit knackered after you're doing your London overnight, eh? which you can see exclusively on his video diaries. I'm not doing video diaries. No, I mean Ian's. Yeah, just say we're going into the National Railway Museum now. To have a quick look round. Hope to get Union of South Africa here too. And the Great Marcus. Here we are in the station hall at the National Railway Museum. Class 442, Gladstone, with the Royal, with the Royal Crests and with the famous Royal Crown Head. Stunning, beautiful. Just look at it, Gladstone. His royal condition. Fit for a king. Have to say. No, it's all right, Jason. It's fine, and I could trust a friend. <laughs> An LMS crap, number thirteen thousand, built to Horwich in nineteen twenty-six. Look, I'm just saved for the nation. <laughs> the engine spent some time at Childen before it repaints into this current condition at Crimson Lake. Now she's stored here in the station hall. She's paired up with some of the royal carriages. Let's 
to give you a shot of the cab, eh? Don't get him. Don't avoid getting in the shot. Also in the station hall, Southern Railway designed M7 tank engine, 042, 044, number 245. Another member of this class is preserved, 30053, now operational at the Swanage Railway. Now she's, 245 is here as a static exhibit at the National Railway Museum in York. And painted in the London and South Western Railway livery. Six five four two three Maud on display here. It's currently on loan to the National Railway Museum after one of the museum's the museum's compound number one thousand is currently up in Scotland. I think this was on as part of a swap deal as agreed with the National Railway Museum. Well, no, it's a, it is part of the swap deal. If you saw that shed code, apologies for the darkness. 64B indicator is based at Haymarket. Haymarket shed. Same shed plate as Union of South Africa, as we'll see later. And there we are, standing at rest. The working replica of Stevenson's rocket. Unfortunately, she's not in steam today. No matter. Good time for ideal photo opportunities. See a little 040 tank engine named Teddy at rest here in the tent. Now two years ago I actually driven this locomotive on a special event. It cost a fiver to drive this little engine on the demonstration route. Of course there was a little film footage found on YouTube but I might be able to re-upload it to show you evidence and maybe to my fellow Power Rail team. <laughs> yes Ian come on in. Yes I know you're reversing. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Teddy, the little 040 tank engine, normally used on special half-term events, and Santa trains. I think that's a little miniature railway running. Anyway, time to move on. We're now in the Great Hall of the National Railway Museum. See, Duchess of Hamilton has returned. As part of the clear-off for Shildon, raised for the successful gathering. Full streamlined condition. Built in 1938, a crew. Fully one of the streamlined built engines. And this engine was, had an identity change with the prototype Coronation. Sent to America, although it came during the Second World War. But it's been sent back to this country. Once you return, your identity is restored, streamlined casing removed, and the railway nationalised. Inside the cab. The 
Duchess was withdrawn in 1963. However, the local was saved by Sir Billy Butlin, beyond display at one of his holiday camps. And now, after Billy Butlin sold the engine on to the National Railway Museum, there was a steam railway magazine appeal to commercially restore her to this current condition, streamlined, members of the 1930s. Paired up with an LMS streamlined liveried coach. Brilliant combination. Now here in the, still here in the Great Hall, See the last engine built for British Railways in 19, March 1960, 9F, 9 Evening Star, built to Swindon. Despite this engine, they had five years of service before being rejoined in 1965. It's a 210 wheel arrangement, one of the powerful British built engines. Ten driving wheels. If you're interested to see on the middle driving wheel, there's no flange on the middle wheel. If there was, this is the reason why Network Rail will not allow the 9Fs to go on the main line, fearing it could damage the axles. Very unique, this 9F, as it's been painted in BR prints with green livery. A pay 92214 just been sold to the Great Central will be repainted just like this. So expect 92214 to be in this livery within a few years or within a month. Just around here, 35029 Element Lines, one of the Merchant Navy Pacifics, designed by Oliver Bullied. Line. No, I've never seen clan line before. I, I know you have. Yeah. Very interesting because one side is a fully good loco, and but on the other end, <laughs> it showed the workings of a steam locomotive, as proved here. Show the workings of a steam loco. Works of the boiler, working of the pistons and cylinder valves. I looked inside of a firebox and also looked inside of a tender of a loco. And of course, showing as another example, rocket. This is another replica built engine, but this time showing the workings of how it looked like in the 18, during the 18th century. Where this type of loco won the Rainhill Trials of 1829. There we are, currently stabled here since bringing Mallard home is John Cameron's missile, Union of South Africa. Now, Union should have been on the Hadrian tour today, although he's been replaced by Scots Guardsmen. Due to gauging issues at Carlisle, as proved a few weeks back when we get we got bitten. As you can see, the Bugatti part of the Bugatti nose has been lifted. Oh, look at the state of that of the smoke box door. Of course, we'll be having a look at the A4 in the car park later. Once Sir Nigel Gresley is gone, eh? have a guess. Now. We'll be leaving for the station again shortly. There we are, Great Western King Class, number 6000, King George V. The first of the class to be built. Designed by Charles Collett and built at Swindon Works. That's in the 1920s, 1927. This is very unique, this King, because if we can have a look here, is the King's Bell. It was presented by the Bo 
Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Company in celebration of the century celebration from September the 24th to October the 15th, 1927. And since that ceremony, the king has held, had the bell ever since. I'll tell you what, he looks very smart with it. Even the kings had to die in 1963 when they were withdrawn from British Railways. However, a group of enthusiasts saved him. He was saved for preservation. And now, the locomotive is part of the National Collection. Beautiful nameplates and such. And of course, the king was, was used on, during the GWR's 150 celebrations in 1985. Unfortunately, on the first run from Bristol to Plymouth, while well, paired up with Hinton Manor, Hinton Manor proved disastrous. As the King failed with a hot box at Taunton. Yeah, this is one of my favourite designs of locomotives. Of course, this was the locomotive that beaten the steam ban. In, 19, in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Paired up with Flying Scotsman caused massive interest. Sadly, in the early 90s, she had never steamed since. She was, store, she was put on display at Swindon, but then, in 2009, she had, he had a swap deal with Evening Star, another Swindon-built machine we saw earlier. Since then, the King's been here ever since. We're now making our way back to the station. Of course, I'm going back. Because I'm returning at least an hour before Sir Nigel gets here. Just on my way back to the station now. Now back in York Station, after a bit of an early lunch. See, we're back at the station itself. Last report, Sir Nigel Gressley was two minutes late at Cellphone Junction. Still shows will arrive here, bang on time, within the next 20 minutes. So we're just now the waiting game, waiting for Sir Nigel. of York Station.
Here he comes. Whoever the West Coast driver is. Christy, just trying to move West Coast Railways 37, 37518. Used to be owned by Ian Riley. Thirty-seven shunting the coaches. So newly repainted XBR Mark Twos.
we are, the car park of the museum. And look what's here. As I said earlier, John Cameron's missile, Union of South Africa. Strange to see the top half of the Bugatti nose is up. Just wait for Sir Nigel Grizz to come. Here is Sir Nigel Gresley. Right, here comes Nigel Gresley, he's about to be cold. Oh. Roger Barker guiding Sir Nigel in. The main attraction of the day, Sir Nigel Gresley, getting serviced. Built in 1937 at Doncaster, designed by the man who designed this loco, Sir Nigel Gresley. This loco holds the post-war speed record of 112 miles an hour. This is one of the six locos that was sent to Scotland do the Scottish services between the two Scottish cities. Following withdrawal in 1966, it was saved for preservation by the A4 Locomotive Society for £4,500. Now Sir Nigel Gresley is back on the main line. I better make most of it because 2015 in October next year the boiler ticket runs out. So make most of Sir Nigel as you can.
Čago, vje? Why am I? Safe to go through. Coming down ten.
about a minute early. That's about plus 46 points on my side. That's fantastic. I've always wanted to see that. Two West Coast 57s coming in the loop. I know what this is for. Nigel Gresney pushing the coaching stock in. Take two. Oh, no, it's not. They must have put an extra carriage on. No, it's all right. Come on, Sir Nigel. Give it all you've got. See, it's the same coaching stock as yesterday. I mean, Wednesday. That's it. Same there's, stock. There's the two, yeah, there's the front two. I'll back all the two we... Um, yeah, you're right. Hey, newly, like, mostly newly repainted Mark IIs. Coming, she's coming. So Nigel Gresley, now ready for departure for Finsbury Park. Should have been going to King's Cross, but terminated to Finsbury due to engineering works. Hope to see this loco again in the future. If not, it'll be October. It'll be my last chance to ride behind him before the boiler ticket goes up.
Car license. Here are our ladies and gentlemen, City of Truro, placed on the turntable in the Great Hall, built in 1904, designed by George Jackson Churchwood. Although during the Ocean Mail in 1904, this was the first engine to unofficially reach 100 miles an hour for Plymouth. Reach 100 miles an hour unofficially. Yeah, George Jackson Church Churchwood was a designer of this locomotive. Right. Oh. Built in 1904, which is 110 years old this year. The loco was withdrawn in the 1930s for the National Collection. However, it was being brought back to life for a brief time in the 60s to work a number of rail tours before being finally being withdrawn again in the 60s. And now it's part of the National Collection. She returned first proper in preservation in 1985 in time for the Great Western 150 celebrations. Unfortunately, she should have been doing a Cornwall run from Bristol to Bristol to Cornwall, but Clung Castle stepped in instead. But then the Steam Railway Magazine appeal came in and, it, and she returned to steam 10 years ago this year to commemorate the 100 mile an hour run on the ocean mail, t on the ocean mail train. But sadly, she will never steam again after s problems the previous year. <laughs> Although, she should have been on loan till the boiler ticket expired at the East Lancashire Railway. That's why you do it. But sadly, she will never have steam again. Very sad to hear. But let's hope if anyone gives generous amounts of money or Steve Rowe magazine does the appeal again, please, can we see this engine running again? 3717 is dead. Uh, we knew that, Jason. <laughs> anyway, please, if anyone's listening out here on Set YouTube, please get this engine up and running again. <laughs> and if you ever do, I would like to buy you a beer. <laughs> Oh, they could see him up six, 600 pounds, and that would be lovely. <laughs> there we are, John Cameron's other locomotive here. K461994, the Great Marquis. Now, he should have been doing the one spec rail tour today, but unfortunately, due to maintenance issues, she's not. Instead, 61264 is currently in her position right now. Currently, currently it's... running part five light. Oh dear. And there's the 37 we saw earlier, shunting the coaching stock into the sidings. But uh, they must have discovered the problem while she was doing the X Valley tour with 61264 to Whitby. One thing to shame about though, Ben, is the fact that West Coast Railway's not, uh, not really are going to open their to the sheds for people to have a look inside. Mm. You know. They do it once a year. Mm. But on the, they only do it probably when expected to do it for anybody else. So... But I'll be able to see her in operation later on this summer on the Feldsman Tours and Welsh Mountaineer Trip. Sky One, 91. passing by. Sky One, it's D91 without it. Oh, sorry about that for the distraction. 
Yeah, as I said, hoping to race her on from Preston to Carlisle later on in the summer. When she does when she's rostered on the Felsman tours before she goes in for overhaul. National Railway Museum's V2, Green Arrow. Last time she ran was six years ago, when she failed due to a cracked superheated tube on the North Yorkshire Moors during the LNER weekend in 2008. Sadly, she won't be running again, unless I heard plans that she could be running again. Which, fingers crossed, I hope it is. But only time will tell. You know, she, she has been operating on the national network in both in this livery, LNR Apple Green, and British Railways, Brunswick Green, as 6800. Yes, Phil Davies <laughs> and Jason. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, first time I saw this was 2009, right here, although in display in the Great Hall. Now she's in the Flying Scotsman story. Anyway, I am hoping she returns to the main line. Hopefully runs over the Sahuan Carlisle. Now inside the workshop at the National Railway Museum. Down here, nothing relevant, only a 37. Come down this way. The boiler for Flying Scotsman. Probably still controversial. Five million pounds spent on it already. Even though Ian Raleigh does have the contract. Trying to get it running again. You know, Ian Raleigh does have the contract to get Scotsman going again. And once it's complete, they got a two-year loan. Ian Raleigh has. Down there, nothing relevant. Only a narrow gauge engine. But over here... Something seriously Im Oops. <laughs> Watch it there, Jay. <laughs> Something seriously important we want to know for later on in the summer. <laughs> Over here is something very important we want to see later on in the summer. Hogwarts Castle nameplates been put on. Yes. Later on this year, I will be riding behind this loco in June, coming here from Carnforth. I cannot wait. Since this is her last rail tour before it... So, you know, this year, her mainline ticket runs out. Her mainline certificate. I have my date with destiny. My first ride behind one of Smithy's engines. Now finally in the cab. This is my third nine F1 cap. The last steam loco built for British Railways. I've had um, the one that's at Drake Central and I've had the one at the Midlands. Cool, have you had the one at uh, North Yorkshire Moors yet? No. No. Uh, the nine F based on the North York Moors have been sold to the, one of the GCR directors. Really? Yes. Which one's the North nine two, Oh, the Mid Hats. That's a uh, 92212, Jeremy Hoskins engine. What? The one at what? North Norfolk. Yeah. Black Prince. But that's currently a crew. Undergoing overhaul. Now our driver's eye view at the 9F. John Cameron's missile, 6009 Union of South Africa. Curly stabled with top of his cod's mouth opened, part of the Bugatti nose. It's currently at rest. 
Now, it has not been steamed since February, escorting his record-breaking sister, Mallard, home from Shildon after the great goodbye event. Now, we shouldn't have been seeing it today because it should have been doing the Hadrian tour. But as we know, thanks to not work fail, all A4s are out of gauge at Carlisle. I'm afraid so, Phil. <laughs> anyway, our filming here at the National Railway Museum is done. We're going to be heading back to the station now, ready for our train home. What? We're now here in uh, York Station. Uh, a very good day today, seeing Sir Nigel Gresley. Of course, thanks for the company today of Jason. Nice seeing you again. Dr. Moxon. Nice seeing you again, mate. Phil Davies. Nice to meet you. And of course, Ian Poole, who unfortunately is not with us. Due to he went off early. Yeah. Well, he was a bit tired doing his overnight uh, from London. He's doing other. He's doing, uh, he's doing Bradford Interchange, New Pudsey and Bramley as well. So. Ah. Then he's got a Premier in in uh, Bradford. So. Ah, that's where he's spending his overnight. Sleeping, that is. After he did in London, I couldn't even survive an inch. I could. Well, I know you could. You did Carlisle. Very <laughs> Um. Anyway, time to wrap it up here because it is going to be a Saturday night. Uh, troublemakers, drinkers, all that. It was a good day today seeing Sir Nigel Gresley on the main line. Yes. Anyway. Time to wrap it up now. You can follow me if you want on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Richie WWE LFC, and on YouTube as well. This video is copyrighted by me, Rich Tardy 2014. If anyone's tried to nick it, print screen it, whatever, I'm on to you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the 225th video. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.